Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Endless Legend where I think, I've been thinking about it, I think we're going to have to kill Blue. Here's the thing, in order to win the game what we actually have to do is stop Red from winning probably. Uh, Red is ahead of everybody in every metric that matters except Blue uh, is apparently doing some serious work lately. I don't know what is happening here. I mean I know they have the Mega Pole, but like they've had the Mega Pole since, you know, hereabouts. I don't know what has occurred there. That might uh, bode poorly for our ability to kill them. And you know what? They're actually showing kind of a local minimum of military strength. So, my point was, we have to kill Red because Red's the victory threat. But I don't think we can do it with the territory we have now. I think we're just, we're too weak and we're not getting stronger faster enough. So, here's my plan. Here's my, my sort of long-term plan. And it's turn 67, so long-term plans have to be executed pretty quickly from this point in the game. We have to build up a military that is capable of taking out blue. Probably won't be all that difficult, is my guess. Uh, roving clan units are not great. Just That's just sort of like broadly true. Obviously they have access to minor factions, but you know. Um, we need to build up a military that's capable of taking out blue. Take all of blue's stuff. Continue building up that military over that time. And then once blue is defeated, spend a very small amount of time solidifying and then immediately go after red so um to be clear i don't expect this to work i think this is our best play forward but i think i've gotten us into kind of a rough position here and uh i would say that victory is unlikely from here so we can see he's running around a lot of dervishes what are his most modern units i see dervish okay dervish six 82 attack 75 damage we are in a little bit of danger trying to fight a cavalry-based force with what will, for us, be an archer-based force. So we need to, uh, we definitely need to develop titan tech. We need titans to fight their, their dervishes. What else do we need? Uh, endless recycling is, uh, very powerful, although it's not that great for us yet. We don't have that many built-up districts. We've just started expanding out. We could grab Dust Refinery. Actually, maybe I want to grab Dust Refinery first. It's just a lot of money. It's a tech that is a huge amount of money, and it will really help with our military development. We get Titans. Um, we have smelting stations, so we can start building up the resources necessary for our uncommon alloys to, uh, to make us some new weapons. We can swap our holy resource over to, like, Adamantian. So Palladian is the plus food resource and Adamantian is the plus industry resource. Adamantian is definitely the resource that I would prefer to be our holy one, but I guess actually we only have one deposit. It probably makes more sense for us to go for Palladian weapons then. Man, Adamantian is better. Plus 20% industry is so good. All right, well, we'll, we'll probably end up on Palladian then. So we got to get our Palladian, our Palladian extractors going as quickly as possible. We also probably don't want to take this open borders deal as much as I would love to be trading with him. Um, I don't want to give him all this stuff if we're maybe going to be fighting him, especially I'm worried about giving him a lot of strategic resources. So let's, uh, I guess let's take the counter proposal here. Actually, this deal, if we offered it to him, he would refuse. He's, right now, he views this as him giving us a good deal. Okay, so we're doing a flat refusal then. He's friends with Pink. So going to war with him might make Pink mad at us, but Pink can't declare war on me, so that's probably fine. Pink will be a good trading partner eventually once we get our cargo docks going. Did I research cargo dock yet? I did. Okay. Alright, yeah, so I mean we have a lot of stuff to do. A lot of things are happening here. Uh, we have a lot of green ships in the area, which makes me think we're probably not going to be able to stop green from taking control of this ocean. We can make a run for this fortress. I think we can take it. I think we're outside of all of their reinforcement ranges. And this is mostly about wasting Green's time. Trying to make it as hard as possible for them to actually get in control of this ocean. Right? Yeah, they're not actually in position to defend any of this. This is mine now. Haha. -ha. And then we need to immediately get back in our territory or we're going to get killed. All right. Yeah, I've worked us into a, into a tough position here. For the record, I do not think this game was unwinnable. I think I just didn't win it. 
All right, what's next? What's next in the capital? We got to make military units, uh, but is that the right now thing, or is that right now a let's build out and get more resources kind of thing? Oh, that's on the other side of the uh, district border. What is my approval level in this city right now? Another district would take us out of fervency. You know what? Let's build military units. We're going to have to do some retrofitting. I could skip Titans entirely and just stick with Rumblers, but I actually, Titans are great. Rumblers are fine, but Titans are great. So let's let's build up some Marines here. They're going to have to be retrofitted, but that's going to have to be later. So all of our cities are now building things. Ronf is not building it. We don't really need right of way. We need a cargo dock here. We need a cargo dock here, and we need a cargo dock uh, somewhere on the main continent, and that'll hook our trade routes up. I mean, we got to build... Oh, actually, Gadnek's also going to have to build... Uh, well, maybe I don't need to worry about building a cargo dock in, in uh, Gadnek because Emosi is certainly going to be the first city that we take from Blue just so that we can uh, focus the conflict over here. We can like we can have our whole army over here, take Emosi, which they can't reinforce in any way, and then once Emosi is ours, we can just teleport our guys out of it over to Nequakic to uh, continue the war from there. So actually, you know what might be a good idea is getting some um, defensive tax and building up Nequakic so that it is uh, powerful and difficult to kill. We also need to have a functional garrison there. Although, again, we're just going to teleport. Probably that is probably that's not actually true. We don't need to have a garrison in position. All right, and as far as dust goes, we are nowhere near affording another hero. We have a couple of governors governing just as hard as they possibly can, and that's going to have to be good enough for now. All right, let us... Oh, what do I want to do with you? It would probably be best if we could go and, like, search stuff, but it's really unsafe in the water right now. I guess we'll see how things work out. But yeah, if we, uh, if we take Blue's territory... Not only do we get a bunch more territory, but each of Blue's cities is going to be considerably better than any of my cities. So, that'll help too. Yeah, our cities are not awesome. Alright, let's make sure we are mashing the button here. We gotta get our ship back in the water, as, or back in friendly waters as quickly as possible. Oh, Dust Eclipse! Okay, we are about to have a Dust Eclipse, so we should teleport some units to appropriate positions to take advantage of that. Run, guys, run! It's okay for the fortresses not to be mine, as long as they don't belong to green. And a dearth of dust has begun. That's unfortunate. You know, just unfortunate is what that is. Uh, boy. These guys are going to not be able to take this back this turn. Oh, nope, they had zero points of movement and then moved again. Apparently the, uh, the movement point thing here was reporting them as already having moved when they visually had not yet. Oh, we do also have to take care of this. So, what are we building here in Rayet? Possibly an apprenticeship registry. Seven more industry in this city is actually a considerable boost. And we can build other stuff from there. Central Market probably follows. Alright, how many of these ruins are the right kind? So both of the ruins in this region are temple ruins. Right? Yeah, that is not... So we definitely... We want one unit to teleport over to Rayet. Uh, this is a temple ruin. These guys are being very inconvenient at the moment. Alright, so let's pop a marine out and have them run home to Gadnak for the teleportation. We'll keep one unit here. I guess it should probably be the other marine. And then we'll teleport the hero back to the mainland, wherever that is most appropriate to do. There's a temple ruin there. Um, temple ruin there. Temple ruin there. Okay, yeah. So we want to teleport our hero out to the place where we're going to get the most ruin searches, because obviously we still need the XP. And the hero's one space slower than the marine is. All right. Uh, and you, I guess, are just hanging out because you really want those guys to move. Yeah, okay. Must convert into a military powerhouse, somehow, from the position that we have found ourselves in. I guess we'll figure it out, because we have to. 
So it looks like people who are not green are having a really hard time challenging green's local military power here. Hopefully that will not remain true for too long. I don't know how long I can keep them from owning the region. Titanium has ended. And at this moment, maybe we do want to swap to glass steel for a little bit. Just for the dust. Because we're kind of in a situation dust-wise. And that'll be the case for the next nine turns. So a ten turn dust boost actually sounds fine. Uh, here we will not... Incompatible diplomatic status. That's, yeah, that's fine. I am fine with them getting that. Uh, hold on, we'll deal with this in a second. Incompatible diplomatic status. I'm not at peace with green. Why am I not allowed to participate in the defense of my own stuff against green's troops? That's weird. Alright, blue is keeping this region live. We just need it, we need it not to be totally controlled by anybody else. So every minor faction has a quest that they give you when you have assimilated them for a while. This is the one for the Ursus. The Ursus leader looks you square in the eye, tells you that his people have lost something extremely valuable. Will you help us recover it? He asks. His followers' faces deep and serious. You offer to help. The leader replies, For us, sheep are the most noble creatures. Are, sorry, are the noblest creatures. Intelligent, peaceful, soothing. I have lost my sheep, Igor. Uh, inspect ruins indicated by the rays of dust with a hero to locate Igor and... Okay, dude. You did not lose your sheep. You mailed him to a distant country, and now you want me to help you with that. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that much about the uh, about the postal system over there in Roving Clan's territory. That sounds like a you problem. Not to sound heartless or anything. We're going to have our hero pick up this Swift Conflux. I guess, actually, I could have merged the two units back, grabbed the Swift Conflux, and it would have affected both of them. And then re-separated them. That's probably the right way to have done that. And these temple ruins are not searchable. So apparently, if any player searches them, the eclipse effect is lost. The roving clans robbed me on that one. Well, I don't know what to do with you then. I guess... Boy, we don't know for sure that we can actually make landfall over here. Okay, there is in fact a space to move into. I'm a little nervous jumping in the water right there, though. I'd be immediately attackable if these guys have their action point, And we don't know for sure that they don't. I guess I could get in the water here instead. And then... Oh, yeah. Moving from here to here costs an extra point of movement because of their zone of control. So I actually can't make that move on the first uh, the first turn in the water. So actually, the only safe thing to do is to get right back out of the water immediately. Fair enough. Alright, getting, getting to some of the good hero levels here. You guys really can't do much of anything. Green's going to go take control of that. I can't stop them. We can't take this from blue because I'm currently at peace with blue. So I need to watch this thing. And as soon as green's not close enough to it to defend it anymore, I have to take it. Up here we have completed a palladian uh, a thing. A palladian thing. You know what I'm talking about. We get to build this, which is immediately level two, which is pretty great. Uh, can we get that done a little faster? Wow. Yes, but only a little. Here in Nequakic, we have our burrow finished. Could just keep burrowing. Pretty compelling. If I burrow to right here, we get to pick up a an escaped specimen's space. If I burrow to here, we will get geothermal pit. And either one of those spaces is fine as far as leveling up our districts go, because we'll we'll want them both eventually, along with this. The science pickup over here is better. Over here, there's a little bit of dust to be had, which makes this not exactly a priority. But maybe what I should be doing here is building military unit instead. Probably. We have to we have to get our military put together, and fortunately for us, it doesn't matter too much where they're built. Any military unit can be anywhere at, at, at a moment's notice, which is just super handy. Alright, so we're looking at winter coming fairly soon. I would really like to get the rest of the Palladian Extractors up 
so that we can pop a, our first Palladian booster during the winter, as soon as this ends would be ideal. What's up? Scales seem to balance in our favor no matter how you look at them. Really, an observation from the greatest empire. Yeah, alright. You and I are going to have some words about that one. He has sailed his ships foolishly. Nope, never mind. I was going to say foolishly far enough away that he cannot defend his holdings, but in fact, he's coming back to defend his holdings. And it looks like Red's going to handle this anyway, so we just got to get back to safety. Uh, they got on land? Hmm. We don't know for sure that those guys don't have their action point left, so I'm going to do this, just not be next to them any longer than I absolutely have to be, and we're going to rush onto land with our next turn. This is an Erisus village. These are troops that are just unarmed. I mean, they have they have um, basic gear, iron or dust gear, appropriate to the era that Green is in. But I'm wondering if we could destroy this village just using this one marine and the garrison of this uh, city. I think we're not close enough to be able to get the garrison of the other city. Oh, really, really close, but no, not quite. Hmm. Let's not worry about it just right now. Let's just go get our uh, get our temple ruin here. Hundred and fifty dust, and this uh, this ruin is not glowing. Ah, a green a green army has appeared and taken it from us. What a bunch of monsters! Man, the Dust Eclipse is just its just my favorite time of year. Alright, so we're going to be able to get all of these really easily. That was a lucky movement. Conflux. The Tome of Endless Savagery, which makes you kind of good at fighting guardians. I really don't care for it. In my experience, very, very rarely worth the slot. So, Judith, you have Army Defense Boost 2. We might want to grab alchemical armor at this point to get access to the uh, um, the army damage booster. And the army initiative booster is also fine. We'll see. I should definitely get the titan first. Right here we need to build the palladian extractor. That is pretty important. And then maybe a cargo dock here? I don't know. It's less. It's less important here. Really, we need one. We need one. The second one is way less valuable. So you have 362 dust. Is that going to be better served rushing stuff or trying to save up for a hero? We're pretty far away from a hero, and it's going to be a while before our dust reserves are actually in a good place. But we do need, you know what, we need retrofit costs. So I should probably save. Getting Gadanak online is not, like, super important. This is probably not the best time to build seed storage, but we have no idea how long before the winter. You know what, let's, let's be gutsy on that front. Let's try. So you need to get on that landmass. Nobody else... Oh, you have... Yeah, okay, you have movement orders entered. Okay, those are the only ones we really need to make sure get done. I'm glad I didn't attack that village, because that uh, army up there of greens might have been in defensive range. We will have to deal with it. But this is apparently not our moment. Now, what is this? We've been banned from the market. Well, I don't think that's a big deal. We probably were not going to get any any uh, interesting use out of the market anytime soon anyway. So that has changed hands. All right. Uh, there is no other ruin for us to search over here. So what do I want to do with this marine? I guess we should grab a minus upkeep, Conflux. There's no reason not to. And then we want to get back to town and teleport somewhere. I just don't know where yet. Hundred more dust. Stupid blue stealing my uh, my ruins. So there's not going to be any over here then. Actually, it looks like Blue maybe is not, uh, they're not being so aggressive with the ruins in their own territory. 
figuring that I just won't get to them. So let's uh, let's try to make them pay for that if we can. All right, what am I gonna do with these ships? Uh, they probably just need to kind of be in a central-ish location where they can mess with people. A lot of com uh, competition over here for these very small fortresses. And the dust refinery is finished, so that is a priority in a bunch of places, actually. We do need to keep building military units as well. I'm not actually sure... I'm not sure what the correct percentage of devotion to military is. You know, obviously we got to get our military done, but we also have to keep building infrastructure. Cannot afford to fall behind. We're currently bringing in four Palladian per turn. It'll become six once we finish that. It's going to take us quite a few turns before we're ready to pop a booster. That said, uh, once we have that set as our holy resource, winter is going to be really interesting. Get a lot of resources really, really quickly come winter. That is a red settler, so this region is about to become owned. You get war against another empire in ten turns for a, really, just like a pittance. Not even an amount of gold I care about, or dust, rather, I care about. I am strongly considering attacking the settler. I mean, I should, right? There's absolutely no reason not to. You can have that region, but you're going to have to work for it a little bit. All right, you should definitely not try any shenanigans with that village. That's clear. Uh, what do I want to do with you, though? Maybe I just want to drop him into the garrison here, right? Rayet has a... Oh, no. Rayet does not have a governor. Ramph has a governor. Well, we could drop him into the garrison in Ramph, I guess, because I don't know what to do with him right now. He doesn't really have a, a strong purpose. The ocean regions right now are red, green, green, so we need to get over here and look for an opportunity to ungreenify this. We might be safe attacking here. It is somewhat uncertain, however. I think we are. I think I can take this. And then we retreat to our safe territory immediately afterward. You... Can't... I oh, that's right. Their borders are closed to me. Well, we'll search some sea ruins then. I don't really have anything else to do with this hero right now anyway. Right, that's why they're being more aggressive with the ruins in my territory. Because they know I can't go get theirs. Oh, hey, we found the fire ship design. Uh, that's kind of cool. Also, kind of a disappointment because that means that our tech costs have gone up. And I don't really want the fire ship design, but I do really want the other stuff I'm researching right now. So, uh, some positives and some negatives there. Okay, we do need to make sure that we are mashing this button. We're going to have to get rid of Green's Village over there at some point, but we might have to bring like some actual units to do it just in case. Oh, oh! I can't go because the this thing's happening. Yup, you got it. As long as it's not green, I'm fine with it. Although now, now they're red, purple, red. Uh, red has closed their borders in response to my aggression, which is I don't know, pretty reasonable, I suppose. Now I'm worried about these uh, ending up all red. That's going to be inconvenient for me. Can I get? Yeah, I can get across to safety over here. We are going to have to uh, break this one down, I think. I just have to keep them off balance. If anybody actually sews that region up, it's going to be a real pain for me to get it back. For now, it's still totally possible. Found ourselves an Eclipsed Temple. Okay, 180 dust out of that. Pretty good. Can I just jump in the water here? No, I cannot. Uh, you know what? Let's stay on land for the moment. I don't need the three pearls that badly, and I want to see what's over here. We need a little bit more information about the world. I think you are just going to garrison. And you can come back over here and get this sea ruin, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I think we need the refineries active. As much as I want to keep building troops. We really need these. And the troops should probably be moved to... 
cities that have governors. If they're just going to sit around, we should have them sitting around at a place where they're generating XP. Then in Gadanak, uh sewer system would actually be great here. Then just like all of the basic stuff. Oh, we should probably probably get this apprenticeship registry done now, although I want I want the sewer system first, obviously. So where are we at on boosters? Right now we are only running boosters that are sustainable. So this is a real approval value. We just uh, we gotta drive that up a little bit. Yeah, part of the problem is that these cities that don't have markets now have like a lot of population. So it'll be partially resolved when that when that is resolved. So we're going to get, I think, one more turn of four, because I think we get our resources and then the build queues are processed. So we'll get one more turn of four, taking us to 26. And then three turns after that, we will be ready to pop the booster. Uh, we have six turns left on this, so yeah, we're going to be in plenty of time. Hopefully, winter will start just about as that glass steel booster ends, or at least not before the glass steel booster ends, because I want to have the whole winter devoted to palladium production. And then, actually, we don't even have our adamantium extractor up. That probably should change. Is that more important than getting a market built in this city? Probably not. There's a lot of population here. We need we need the people here to be happy because they're dragging down our empire average. Okay. Let's see what happens in the water over here this turn. Well, that's a pretty okay time for the eclipse to end, I suppose. What's up? Uh, they would offer to remove my market ban if I gave them a bunch of technology. We'll see. No, we won't. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, it looks like actually Red's going to get control of this, which is maybe a little awkward. I suppose Red is one of the sources. Red's a person we're likely to be able to take it back from eventually. So I guess that's fine. Yep, we did get four. So you get your resources, then your build queues process. Potentially useful information for the future, maybe. You really don't have a seed storage yet, huh? Well, this is probably not the time. Wow, we don't have a central market here either? We should build a market. I need to get back to Fervent. Alright, you... And head up here. Any more ruins to search? Now, uh, looks like we might be out of luck. Show me something cool. It was 80 dust. You know what? Cool enough. That absolutely counts. <sighs> do we want to do this? I don't really need to have access to the market right this second, but it is good to have access to the market in a general sense. They are triumphant. Oh, right, right. Uh, these texts would certainly be helpful to them. Probably cultivation more than any of this other stuff. Yeah, at this point, language square is meaningless, right? Because all of the minor faction villages are going to be dealt with already. So this is really just me giving them cultivation. They already have ships. They just don't have these ships. Yeah, all right. Getting a market ban removal that doesn't cost us any influence at all is pretty good. Ah, huh, this cargo... Oh, there's not actually a district there yet. Oops. Well, okay, we will get the cargo dock leveled up. So as soon as the next winter starts, we'll have access to these uh, outer boosters. I kind of think it might be worth taking Luxury Intensifier and building it on that tile, because we're going to have trouble keeping up with our race of our rate of spice extraction relative to our rate of spice consumption. And that'll give us another district there that doesn't eat up a, a population slot. So maybe this is what we want to be saving pearls for. It's 20 to buy it and then 10 more to actually build it. So we're going to need a little bit more, but I, we can't do it until winter hits anyway. And when winter hits, we're going to have the opportunity to pick up a lot more pearls. So I guess I'm not too worried about that. 
what was this quest? I had to give them uh, some vessels, and they were going to give me 20 spices. You know what? Honestly? Yeah, I'll do that right now. Because when the current spice booster ends, I believe we're not going to be able to run it again. And that probably changed that. Yeah, in two turns we're going to... Yep, okay. That was enough spices to keep the spices running. Okay, so we're building dust buildings. Yeah, we're getting we're getting our infrastructure back in shape. We actually probably are going to be able to buy a hero, so probably good that we got the market pan removed. Although, I think we definitely want to wait until at least turn 76 because that'll be when the new crop of heroes shows up. And I assume, yeah, nobody changed anything about the winter effect. So during the winter, the core unit of blue and pink's army will be uh, much, much weaker to arrow fire. This is also a good thing for us. There are some things that are lining up in our favor. Not as many things as I would like, but some things. And remember, when Dearth, for, when Dearth of Dust ends, we're actually going to be in really good shape economically. Okay, these marines should also be in a place that could generate some XP. We should actually probably be working on leveling up Weyrasigo more than leveling up uh, Strikes Far. Green has declared war on me, which is really bad. Blue would like an alliance, which I will accept at this moment. I'm hoping that will uh, be a good way of convincing Green out of their situation. So let's uh, refuse this, because I think, I think their borders are now open to me. I think that's how that works. Uh, <laughs> that was a desperation alliance. I'm really glad they came along at exactly that moment. They're converting my villages. Okay, so these guys have to teleport over to Ranf. It's a good thing we have a couple of units, or we could have been in a lot of trouble. What are we actually looking at here in terms of stats? 143 attack, 94 damage, but only 67 defense. Our Puas are very, very dangerous, especially if you're running a ranged heavy army, because it's impossible to keep them out of your ranged. But now that we are allied, did that immediately put... No, that did not put Blue at war. If we had been allied when the war declaration happened, it would have put them at war. So can I... Uh convince you to I can't convince them to declare war on green shouldn't that be a term that's available then I'd be able to say hey you do stuff why why can I offer things but you can't offer that I can't ask you for things this might be a weird issue with the fact that the diplomatic change was this turn but I should I should be able to ask them to oh no, of course I can't ask them to declare war. They're the roving clans. Well, they can fight Green's units in my territory because they're not at peace with Green. And I have to request that. Uh, unfortunately, you don't have access to controls like that in this one. They have stuff like that in Endless Space 2. Um, but, man, I had, to, I had to say, I'm surprised that happened. Also, what on earth is happening here? Why did Blue suddenly want an alliance with me? I mean, cool. Cool, I'm glad we're friends and everything, but it's just, it's weird. I don't understand it. How does Blue have this city? Did that really, was that really just completely unsettled? Because Blue's never been at war with anybody, right? The roving clans can take cities from other players if they can convince those other players to declare war on them. I'm starting to think that we might not have been able to win this war, actually. Okay, well, we're st it's still good that we're building up militarily because we still probably have to fight red. Uh, our trade routes should be reconfigured because we, we should have open uh, trade routes, open borders with them now. So our trade routes will be reconfigured at the beginning of the next turn. Yeah. Um, that's going to be really good for us economically. And we have a car. We have like docks and stuff too. This is that's gonna be really good for us economically. Uh, so I guess everybody take a moment to work on infrastructure, and we will uh, we'll get stuff put together for the war on red, the eventual war on red. Also, I mean, it's sort of 
cheesy to win this way, but like, what if we just, what if we just helped Blue win an economic victory by being a really good trading partner while we were allied with them, and they just dragged us along? That could happen. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. That was, that threw me for a loop. I am I was unprepared. So we need this region not to fall to red. I think that this is undefended. I'll just take that, thank you. Now we control the dust accumulator. And also I'm a terrible coward, so I'm just gonna move back over here. Uh, I guess it's not the end of the world if blue gets control of this region now. Some weird stuff, some weird stuff is happening here. So, uh, for enabling our war effort against red, what else do we need? Well, we need weapon tech. We need uh, the other thing. You know, that thing. We need um, uh, trinkets. We need the accessories from this tech, I think. That stuff will be good. Now that we have real a real trading partner, maybe it's worth pursuing highway outposts, but I think we should probably get this wartime stuff first. We may have a real thing on our hands here. All right, let's look. Uh, let's look this way. So I'm I'm allowed in Pink's territory. We also could just burn this village down. It's a single boast, and it won't be a very well equipped boast. But cavalry is broadly good against ranged units, so I think I'm just gonna step into Pink's stuff and let's see if we can't get some dust out of their territory or something. I don't know what I'm gonna do with you for the moment. We have to... Actually, I do know what I'm going to do with you. I'm going to assign you to this army. And then this army is going to teleport over to Ranf. And we're going to figure it out. Uh, let's talk about Empire Plans. So that we know how much influence we have to do, uh, to play with in terms of trying to seek peace from Green, who could definitely kill me. I would love to get 420 influence put together, which it looks like we actually will do right now. We have five more turns. We're going to be at 453 influence when the Empire Plan phase hits. But if we can't get that, it's not the end of the world. So basically what I'm saying is, I think we have some influence to play with here. I would like a truce, but we're probably going to have to win a battle or two before that is a thing that can happen. Uh, we don't have any other loose military units anywhere. No, I moved them all. Alright, and we just have to hope that Blue comes to our aid on the landmass here. Green declaring war on me feels spiteful. Uh, probably it has a lot to do with the fact that I've been taking their fortresses and they're angry about that. I get that. I, I see where they're coming from. <sighs> okay. We gotta build some titans. So on this turn, we need to teleport quickly. I don't know for sure that we can beat that army, but we have a chance of beating that army. And the fact that these two cities are so close together is certainly going to be helpful in that respect. Alright, get over here. Stop hitching. Alright, there we go. Ha! Yep, I guess we did do that, didn't we? Yep, you can see our trade routes reconnected, and now all of a sudden things are looking great. None of these are land units, so that's a shame. Apparently we're doing this. I'm being attacked in two places. Oh, yeah, that's that's pretty whatever. Uh, I think that guy is just retreating. And then fleeing. Let's get back to friendly territory. Hey, I'm trying to... Alright. Sometimes the game doesn't execute moves until... Uh, until the animation finishes playing out, and other times, not so much. Alright. So, we have a lot of units. Our units are pretty militarily inferior, but we do have 100 points of fortification to go with them. This is a problem if we lose it. If we win it, it might be the door to uh, peace negotiations. Let's see. This is just a normal ended from the village. It just has base stats. The Arpuas are very dangerous, and there's four of them. The Nameless Guard is also very dangerous. He's a little bit more killable, though. The Preacher is a Preacher. Wow, they managed to get that Preacher up to 54 damage, though. This is going to be dangerous. This is going to be scary. 
We must win. This is a this is a lose the game sort of threat. I am I am trying to interact with this battle. Okay, I think we got. Yeah, we got the waiting for opponent bug. Okay, well, uh, we will reload the autosave. This does happen sometimes. So this autosave is just going to be at the very beginning of this turn. Uh, and I imagine things will unfold pretty similarly. Oh, except that upon loading the autosave, we're going to have to very quickly perform that teleport. That's not great. I might have to reload the autosave from the turn before. Because uh, I have a serious disadvantage at doing things early in the turn on a game load because it does that, you know, that long animation of like all of the terrain redrawing and stuff. And we definitely need to get the teleport before the attack happens or else the city is just lost. And we don't, we really don't want that to happen. Okay, yep, and the game is hitching like crazy on load. Select and teleport to here. Never mind, we're cool. Everything's fine. Ooh, okay. 480 dust. You know what I could have done? Uh, what I could have clicked in quickly and done is equipped our hero in the city with some actual gear. All right. Uh, we're going to... Hold on. I'm going to select this unit, treat, and then run. Okay, it actually let me move that time. All right, let's try to survive this. Huh. Why don't we get the garrison from Rayet this time? That's the same attack, isn't it? That's weird. All right, well... Uh, we don't actually have a lot of territory. This is probably right, the militia in front and the uh, the archers in back. Probably I want... Boy. So our goal here is just to survive, right? I'm noticing that we don't have our fortification. That's a real problem. We actually really need that. Let's make sure these guys go into... into hold position mode. I don't want them to run out no matter what, but I don't think they would. Uh, if that guy stays right there, you should shoot him. Yeah, I guess we don't really have a lot of play here. Let's just take it easy, because they're, they're going to move to here and attack us, right? There's no, no way they don't. Oh, I guess there is a way. They, uh, if this unit had died... Yeah, the fact that we don't have our fortification for some reason is actually a big problem. I would like you all to prefer this target. Oof. Um, we might have to reload and try this again. We should absolutely have 100 points of fortification. Also. Huh. Huh. This unit completely ignored its orders, even though its orders fell within its strategy thing. Apparently hold position doesn't quite work how I thought it did. It should have attacked the unit I told it to attack, is my understanding, even though it has the hold order. Like, as long as you tell it to attack a unit that's in range, it should prefer that target. But apparently that's not actually how it works. So yeah, we're going to lose the city now. Because, well... So the rest of our units have to come in one by one. If they stay on our reinforcement slots, we may not lose the city. But no, this battle should be taking place with the fortification. We might have to reload at the beginning of turn 75 and fix this. Is this like, I'm getting shortchanged here in a way that really sucks. Alright, so we're going to reload at the beginning of turn 75 and there's some kind of, some kind of something is broken by the turn 76 autosave. We will uh, we will just try that again. 
with our fortification, we're still going to lose all the units in that garrison, but it'll take longer. And then the units in the army won't take as much damage, and then the battle will end without them having successfully killed all of us. Um, and it's important that it goes down that way, because we need to be able to fight back, right? Yeah, I've never seen that before, where your, your guys just don't get the fortification of the city they're standing in. It's a weird bug. Alright, so we accept the alliance offer. We ignore this invalid proposal. Unfortunately, the war declaration happens before the alliance offer does, because it would be really cool if we could, uh... It would be really cool if we could, um... Just have that work the way we would like it to. Oh no, sorry. That was the wrong... I just pressed the wrong button there. Well, putting them into the, uh... Putting them into the garrison has completely removed all their movement. Whatever, it's fine. We'll uh, we'll have them pop out and do the thing at the beginning of the turn. It'll be okay. So, uh, I am not going to run up here and reveal myself to Pink. We're just going to go home. That's what I'm going to do. I have to be careful about the fact that Green has units right there. I would not ordinarily be like, hey, let's go back in time and do different stuff. But uh, this one's the game's fault. I feel comfortable utilizing that excuse. I'm going to break Red's control of that. Alright, what else did we need to build? I was trying to build dust refineries, but you know what? Probably we ought to go for the Titans. So here's the thing. We're going to have to build our titans with the wrong resources and then retrofit them, which might be a little bit expensive. I think we probably have to, though. Go for the basic armor. I'm not going to go for an improved movement trinket right now because we don't necessarily need it. We're, we're about to be fighting a defensive war that is largely teleportation focused. Uh, we do definitely want to equip you with or uh, with titanium gear, but I think I want to go titanium claws, even though they do have some range and the shield might be handy. Uh, the claws will be more broadly useful, especially against the birds. And then we could actually, we could go for an iron ring to give us uh, sharp sense without a shield. That might be worth doing. So how long does it take to build one of those guys? Five turns here in the capital... Roughly 1,500 dust. Well, we do need the infrastructure stuff still. We gotta teleport these units over to Ramph at the beginning of the next turn and snap our hero onto them. Which is probably doable. Is all of this stuff just ships? No, there's a bunch of land troops here. Hopefully Blue is coming to my rescue. It kind of looks like they're all just moving their troops over to Yamosi. I will say that losing Ramph would be annoying but it's better for green to take it than any other faction in the game because they'll just immediately burn it and then we could resettle it whereas with anybody else it would become a beachhead for further attacks um because they could just you know the ai has infinite resources and they could just buy a bunch of troops in it or whatever they don't usually do that but in a lot of cases they could all right i'm gonna give this uh hitting end turn here a shot we'll see how it works out I definitely want you guys to move there. We have to quickly handle this garrison. I completely just pressed the wrong button. Instead of teleporting them, I just told them to get back in the other garrison. We have to teleport over there. And then immediately snap the hero on. Sign. Petro Judit. Then jump into this guy's gear and go like, stuff, 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 apply. Do it in uh, do it in pieces so that I make sure it gets done. Uh, Range Slayer is probably not that useful. Actually, Claws, that's what I want. Apply. And then actually, he probably doesn't have a trinket that is particularly relevant. I guess, Sharp Sense. Give him some strength against the ranged. Oh, Green did something completely different this game. They got in the water. Well, that might be great for me, actually. We got our 480 dust. 
reactivate our boosters. I did not remember to tell this guy to get in the water. We had a lot of stuff going on, in my defense. Uh, so I'm just going to come back home. This is great for us. In fact, that's those are just transport ships. I know they outnumber us considerably, but also, I am relatively confident I can kill six transport ships with two boarding vessels. Especially since these are not base stats. Like, look at how bad a transport ship is. 15 attack, 26 damage, 26 defense. We are going to annihilate those dudes. I don't know why he did a different thing this time than he did last time, but I'm certainly not going to complain about it. And hopefully we've managed to make this region awkward enough for people to handle that Blue can come over here and actually take it. Because I'd be fine with Blue having it at this point. Uh, weird stuff. Been a weird episode. Alright, so we want to launch this attack as quickly as possible. I'm pretty sure we win this. And it will be a devastating loss for Green. The amount of military strength that they sacrifice here is, is a big, it's a big, big loss. Also, I guess I passed the turn there with 1100 dust, which maybe was a bad idea. Maybe we should have bought a hero. Uh, we can still do it. So Dearth of Dust has come to an end, which is awesome. We are like, we're doing really well on money now. Uh, we've got that cavalry defense thing. I am being attacked here in Gadnak, probably indefensibly, so Gadnak is dead. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to do anything about that. Uh, do I want to reduce unit production costs, or do I just want to... I think I just want to keep plowing food into this city. We could get to cadaverous pesticides, I suppose. Yeah, it's probably good to move up. So yeah, we're just going to lose Gadnak. No two ways about that. Well, let's... Uh, hold on. Let's do this battle and then see if Green wants to negotiate. Right after a major victory is the best time to try to get peace. Uh, so let's... These things are ranged, so they probably have the morale... Yeah, they have the morale penalty. Uh, so let's have you move to, like, here. And you move to... Here. Just try to damage their morale with our positioning as much as possible while increasing our own morale by staying close together. And then they're going to shoot at us and not really do a very good job because of their very low attack. Although, you know what? They're wearing us down. I might actually lose one of those boarding vessels. Oh, failed to get the kill. That's not great. Uh, you should go after this one. Because the wounded one is going to deal less damage, right? So we want the healthy one to be going after new targets, but apparently this is how this is going to have to be. So yeah, not, this is not going nearly as well as I thought it was going to. We're still going to win, but not nearly as well as I thought it, went, it was going to go. Okay, so that's a big victory for me. We lost a boarding vessel to take out a full army. Got 90 influence. Um... Did you get influence? I thought you got influence for engaging in combat against enemies of your allies. Yeah, he's still not... Huh. Maybe you just get influence for engaging in war while you are allied. Seems odd. So, now we just won a big battle. Let's see about getting a truce. Oh, if he's going to be a total nightmare about this. Well, there goes my empire plan. Of course, if I don't get the battle, if I don't get this war over with, there goes my empire. So, we do what we must. Man, is that really the only thing that's going to do it? Now, we could give them our entire supply of titanium, I guess. Ugh, I need this. We give him all that dust? I don't really have anything else for him. I could hand him over the, <laughs> that fortress, but that doesn't actually help us. Yeah, we're certainly not giving him a city. Okay, well. I would rather give him all of our dust and some of our titanium than give him the Palladian. We need the Palladian. Yeah, that's my whole empire plan, man. 
you know what? The base level Empire plan is only 120, right? We can actually, we can make that happen. That can still happen. Alright. Uh, and that truce doesn't make this battle not happen, but he would be much less likely to accept a truce if we waited until after the battle, because he will view that as him winning the war, and he'll want to gouge us on it. Alright, uh, is there any version of this where I get to survive? No, hey, notice again that I'm not getting my fortification. In this case, it wouldn't matter. I think we would lose this battle pretty thoroughly anyway. But uh, I'm not sure what's up with that. We should definitely be receiving fortification. I don't know why I manualed this. It's just kind of force of habit. Uh, this should definitely have been an auto-resolve. We can't, we can't survive. That's not such a big deal. We probably won't get this back, though. I bet Blue will settle this before we could resettle it. Well, at this point, our fates are 100% shackled to blue. Oh, wait a second. Does he not burn the village? Because He doesn't burn the city because we're not at war anymore? That was not my understanding of how this worked. I'll take it, though. That's, like... That's great for us, actually. That's awesome. Huh. Is that really how that works? Weird. Well, green's not a victory threat, so I don't feel bad giving them a ton of stuff. I think we actually got off pretty uh, pretty free here. So the really weak Empire plan we were talking about was only 140 influence, which we are currently on track to get. Yeah, we'll be fine. Okay, honestly, that war went about as well as it possibly could have for us, I think. Okay, cool. So uh, we are... Two turns left on the Glass Steel Booster. As soon as that ends, we are in Palladian Boost mode. So that's going to be food for us plus, um, uh, what do you call it? Food for us plus an increased rate of Palladian mining. Plus all of our Palladian troops will be super buff, but obviously that's not a thing we're thinking about right now. Uh, so... The combined empires of orange and blue are pretty powerful. We represent a serious threat to the world. We still need to deal with red, but I, like now we're in for the long haul on this alliance. This alliance is the only way we, we have a chance of surviving in the game, I think. If we can contribute enough, I guess I won't feel too bad about taking a shared victory. I don't know, we'll have to figure it out, but I think this might be a good time to, uh, to end the episode. Weird stuff has been happening, and I think the game maybe needs to rest and clear its head a little bit. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time when we try to manipulate our strange new alliance into some kind of victory position. And we'll see you then.